You won't believe it. Something red arrived at the farm. Are we going to be switching to red? I don't know. I guess we'll find out and see. Good morning. Today I am changing guards and knives on the draper header for the beans. Bo is doing the sickle right now and changing the knives. He's almost done with that one for this header. And I'm going along and taking all the guards off and uh, setting the old ones up here. Gonna replace them with the new ones. And then I'll put the new ones on and then Bo will slide the sickle in. So pretty easy I can show you how I'll how I do one and it's just kind of a repetitive process the whole way down all these hold downs here have been loosened up from when they took the sickle out so they were already somewhat loose. Let's go see what all the racket is that Bo's making. So you're done. Done with that one. So this is the sickle that I was talking about that will slide in with the guards. Yeah, two of them. Well, two of them, yes. This is the one end of it. So you did the one side, now you have one other side left, or do you need to finish the other side? Yeah, I gotta do the other side yet. Oh, okay. So this is just half of it that he's done. Yeah. So he'll work on this one next. And then after that one's done, then he'll do the other two. I just put that red fuel on there. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a lot of red fuel. There. But it don't go off the highway. No. This is off-road use. Yeah. This is clear, see? Look how clear that is. Yeah. Whoa, we gotta put the brakes off. Let's say we got a massive air leak. Uh, we got the Cougar out here, the 1000, and it's hooked onto the super cold or the super chisel here. We have a carbide spike on there at the moment, and then we're gonna be pulling them all off. And we we ordered uh, three inch twists, so we're gonna be putting them on here and changing these out uh, for the the amount of trash wheat trash we have this year. We're gonna want to bury it a little more. So that was the that was the thinking behind that. Uh, the spikes do a nice job with just uh, being able to break up the ground, but this year we want to bury a little more trash, so that's what we're doing. Who put that thing on there? Right. Gotta go like this, doesn't it? Yeah, something like that. It's like a plow. Yeah, on the bottom where it's slotted. Well then it'll spin if it needs to, see it can give. It's like a helicopter in the dirt. <laughs> see what you're supposed to do is you put her on the top to the... <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> yeah, <There> jeez. <laughs> the dirt don't know what to do with all of that. Look at that. Nice and sharp, very nice. So here's a little little information for you. Bolbert there, he uh, did the did the price comparison between deer and sheep. About half the price. Just about half, wasn't it? Or right at half? Yeah, it's about half. 50% off <laughs> compared to the John Deere stuff. Anyway, the savings was about $5,000 on the two headers between 
guards on the whole works and sections on the whole works. And then some hold downs, right? All the hold downs, everything. All the hold downs, everything, yeah. So basically $2,500 a head or cheaper. We have a hard time finding any real difference. Yeah, they're double heat treated on the guards. And we'll find out, I guess. Well, Dane just got done with uh, putting all the shovels on. That's quite a deal, Dane, figuring out where all them need to go. Yeah, get them even. Yeah. 50. Well, let's go get it dirty. Okay. We'll try it out. That nice. red arrived at the farm are we going to be switching to red i don't know i guess we'll find out and see you know what there he no. is look at that oh we're we gonna get him next to it <laughs> hey you're gonna be hopping in this thing in just a little bit oh you dane. better get over here dane we're just teasing dane look at how far away he is scared of the red dane from my ring from a distance he's not a fan of the video camera Oh, he's not a fan of red. Oh. <laughs> he's scared. He's scared. So anyway, what, what's going on here is Titan and Rosa is going to uh, bring out a 595 for us to demo. We're going to put her through a little bit and then see what it'll do. And I'm hoping we don't like it and uh, it'll go back to town. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Uh, but no, we're just going to check this thing out and see what it's all about. And it's got the nice fancy interior and... Honestly, kind of some nice things about it already. I like. So, what year was this one? It was Last 24. Year's? Okay. It's brand new. Yeah, so, I got 22 hours on it. Oh, wow. So, we're not really comparing apples to apples here because our machines are not new. No. <laughs> so, we'll. Uh, power for power, we're pretty close. So. Yeah, we're going to see what the. See what, so what's the deal with the 595 then as far so as like the, uh, horsepower and then the. There's like a boost, I was to there told. Was a fi this was the old 550. Okay. And so but they, did they, they cha changed the numbers on it. You were telling me they changed the way they rated the horsepower? They rated the horsepower now to be in line with uh, John Deere, New Holland. So okay, so when it says... the numbers are, should equal out what we were talking about before. Okay, so. okay. It, but uh, this one will boost up over 600? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. This one here's got cap suspension, PTO. Um, it's set up real nice. Got all the options except for what we talked about. It doesn't have the subwoofer. <laughs> yeah. It's got dual 1200 monitors. Yep. Hope you guys put it through the ringer. And... Oh, yeah. We're going to put the 5200 on it so it'll okay. know it's back there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, probably on some of that CRP ground that we've worked twice now. Okay. So we're going to sink, sink it in a little in. more and bring some black dirt up and, and do some mixing. So we'll see. It yep. it should uh, should handle it just fine. Yep. Fully customizable cab, you mm -hmm. know, for the hydraulics, uh, radio, air conditioning, air conditioning, even seats. It's... Sure. Had air conditioned seat too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. And I like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one here's also got the two two cameras, one in the back and one in the front. Oh, so. sure, that's nice. Ooh. Oh, there's cameras in the back. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, camera there. So when you go into reverse, the monitor, the one monitor is set up. So when you go into reverse, that camera will automatically come on. Okay, so kind of like on a sprayer then. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. 
I don't know if you noticed when you're sitting in here, but you can't hardly see this big stack here when you're sitting in. You know, it's it's actually pretty pretty good. I mean, uh, yeah, they really the way it's that. it's designed there. It's yeah, they got rid of better. the J two of that used up structure vision right yep. in this corner here, and redid that for this here. Oh, okay. Huh? Look how nice that left stain. Wow. Does any of this swing away? Yes, this here all pops down. Okay. Pops down. Hinges down. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hinges right here. For clean out? Yep, clean out. Can stuff. we get behind the main engine radar? Can we get from that side to blow this? Thing? He's wondering if there was a seam between the two so you could you could stick a wand in there and blow it out. Oh sure. He's got a wand with the perforated oh, okay. so you can stick a straight wand in there. Does it have a reversible fan? I don't know if this has got the viscous fan in it. Um I don't think it does. Oh okay. But you can it get it. Have, you can get it. Let me look how cool that is. It's just a hydraulic fan. Versus they want the deer they got so you're already falling in love two snow cat clutches. <laughs> no we, we definitely don't really care for the way that the, the fan drive is on the earlier deers like the the 13s and mm -hmm. whatever they don't last and they're very expensive to replace yeah these tracks are automatic tightening okay so they're tapped in right with the steering there so if, if for some reason you do get a leak on there all you have to do is turn it and it'll self-adjust you oh, don't have cool. to hook up to your hydraulics in the back or... okay well we're gonna we're not gonna be able to dive into the the technology side of it too much since we're not really familiar with it but we're gonna do the basics and we'll see what it's got we'll check back with you here in a bit okay so yesterday i showed you guys the header taking apart the guards and both doing the sickle so this is what it looks like when it's taken apart with all the guards off and the skid plates off. I just set them all up here, skid plates, the old ones, so I can match up the new ones with the old ones, the hold downs. And I started putting it together last night, didn't finish, obviously. So Bo is doing it now. So here's what it looks like with the new ones on. Anyway, should we show them how worn these things were? Where's a good one to show? Right here where the sickle runs in between here. Where it's wore out. This and one's straight. Oh yeah, quite a difference. But we didn't change them last year and I don't think we changed them the year before but because we ran out of time, we didn't have time to change them. So we just threw in a new sickle and we went. So they got good good uh, use out of them. So now we're replacing them and it should cut like a million bucks now. We hope, if Bo does it right. <laughs> so he'll have this one wrapped up shortly and then get started on the other header. Well, we're back up here on the, some of the CRP that we burnt off. We're uh, along the railroad bed here again. After burnt off, you get to see all the stuff that got left behind. So a lot of stuff like uh, like this along here. It's been in CRP for probably 20, 25 years, maybe more than that. Anyway, when they redid the railroad or took the railroad up, whatever, some of it got left behind in the ditch here. So <clears throat> we're gonna get this picked up so it's able to be reworked and uh, level out nice. So for mowing and stuff like that. And then there's a few rock here and there. We found a, a culvert. That's the beauty about this, some of the CRP stuff that doesn't get used for 30 years. You don't know where some of this stuff is, but uh, found a culvert here that goes under the road we didn't know about. That's gonna drain all the water out of this ditch. And uh, cause I was like, well, where does this stuff go? There was no, no pipe on that end. It's right here and it dumps across the, the way, but it was, plug solid and I don't know someone decided to put a whole bunch of rock right here right in front of the culvert here I was starting to move a little dirt and I kept hit, hitting rock well then we spread it around here and started picking about three loader bucket fulls of rock right now but if we want to clean this ditch line out we can't have all that rock in the bottom of the ditch here so I'm assuming there was a reason for it back back when but uh, I don't see a reason for it now Especially with wanting to clean the, the line here along the edge of the road. So 
we're gonna keep getting these rocks dug out of here and then uh and then pull the dirt away so we can find bottom so we know where the bottom is on the uh on the pipe and then when we cut our ditch we can survey off of that we're gonna do that and then uh we're gonna go hook onto the 5200 and get that going out here we got the 5200 going here when you're taking out c or p or sod heavy heavy sod it's never going to look very good the first time like that actually looks pretty good believe it or not so all you want to do you just want to slice it especially your first pass you just want to get her sliced up you don't really want to start rolling sod uh, what happens is if you get it too loose your first pass uh, when you come back over at the second or third time it's so loose and so fluffy that it'll just push you won't be able to slice think of it as like cutting a, a tomato on a balloon if it's spongy on the bottom it's going to be kind of hard to cut that now you take that tomato and you put it on a cutting board on a hard surface underneath and you can slice right through it so <clears throat> the object here is to get the, the sod basically chopped up into little pieces and then once we kind of get that done then you can you can start digging and and, and uh, incorporate some more of that uh, that black dirt and uh, help accelerate the the breakdown of the sod in crp we don't we don't like to go very deep the soil's really uh loose already it's not like it needs to be worked to china it all it needs is just to get that top layer of sod chopped up and then let mother nature do some stuff in the winter break it down a little more and then basically uh, it should be ready for just a one pass thing in the spring that's kind of it on the first pass once we uh go over it again it'll it'll start looking like it's uh getting in shape so here's a wet or a wetter spot to draw we got to lift up a little bit otherwise the tires sink and then uh we can start plugging or skidding Not quite virgin ground. Well, it has been for many years. Yeah. Hasn't been farmed for a long time. 1900s probably. <laughs> At least the 1900s. No, uh, probably, bet you it's been 20, 24 years, I bet, since this stuff was opened up. You want to explain what CRP is? Well, CRP is a conser conservation rever reserve program originally it was designed for like soil bank and stuff like that back and that was before the 80s but mainly it was to take land out of production because of the uh the price of grain was so bad we didn't have a lot of markets we were probably back in the 80s we were 50 percent or 60 percent of the world's wheat production well if there's not a lot of demand for wheat you're not going to be able to do much with corn now being kind of the center stage there's so many more things you can do with it and then also soybeans there's about anything you touch practically has got something to do with soybeans in it whether it's the oils or anything so there's a lot more markets out there and just to kind of get out in front of the people that might think that you know oh well you guys are tearing up ground that should be left in crp and stuff like that actually this is a very very productive soil it shouldn't have went into crp but it did very good productivity index on it basically the conservation reserve program is set aside acres is what it was intended for or at least partially intended for uh, back when the crp went from soil bank to crp you know, I, there's a lot of good things about it, but there's some things I don't really like about it. For one, it's, it's uh, you know, you're competing against the government for land. I guess that's kind of the whole ball of wax on this CRP thing. I'm sure I got some stuff wrong, but please don't crucify me for it. 
um, just uh, kind of saying what I know. But anyway, what we're doing today is we ran that first pass with the sulfur over top of the ground. And then now we're coming back with the second pass with the quick till here. So what the quick till is doing here now, it's basically chopping it up into little smaller pieces. So right now we're kind of in a little wetter spot of the field, or at least a, it doesn't take much of a low spot to start growing moss and, and keep it wet. It's a little heavier soil type right where I'm standing. But anyway, as you can see, we are chopping it up into smaller pieces, you know, so I mean this stuff's kind of pretty wet yet. You know, so it, it makes it more difficult to uh, to dice it up when it's wet. But this machine does a really nice job with that. We're not going very deep, just below the sod line. Uh, not bringing up a lot of black dirt yet. So that this is kind of what it's looking like right now. This is pass number two. Typically on CRP we have three passes in the fall. So we'll have to figure out what tool we want to use on the last pass whether it's this here one more time or even maybe we might even run the chisel plow through here just to just to bring up a little more black dirt i don't know if i really want to do that but we'll see so uh yeah we're cubing it up we're getting it manageable now thank goodness we haven't had a rain for quite a while uh makes it nicer for this taking the crp out we have had wet years when we've done this and uh, sometimes you don't get to it till the spring and that can be a real battle if you don't have a decent spring but anyway that's what we're doing stephanie's going to take over and she's got a little baggie of my lunch snacks <laughs> and flip-flops and pink toes well that's because uh why not be comfortable when you're sitting in a tractor for all day why be uncomfortable yeah so anyway well off she goes. Well, we finished that field. Now Marks is here to set this one for this field. Right? Yeah. This ground over here is a little different, a little lighter, so we're going to set it a little deeper. The ground over there up north was a little softer, a little spongier, so it naturally goes in a little deeper. That's the thing about some of these tillage tools nowadays. You can't just set it once and then send it down the road and forget about it. We gotta adjust it sometimes per field. We've got a lot of different soil types in this county. But anyway, so we're gonna set it up a little deeper in the front. Uh, we're gonna make a pass, set it up, and then uh, let her go back at it. And for setting this one up, it's all hydraulic, correct? No. Or do you have to use a, you need a wrench. He needs the wrench. Let's loosen these up. A little bit of a reference here. Uh, nice simple design. I like it. There, we'll set them both the same to start with. Actually, we'll go, uh, we'll go a hair deeper in the front. Should be good. We'll see what it does. See how it's tracking? Uh, it's definitely tracking middle of the tractor track is right there so we want it to track over so that back row is pulling it over because it's deeper than the front so we're going to set the front down a little deeper and pull it back center to see something from that view it was kind of hard to find a good spot for you guys but I'm gonna finish working this field and move across the road to the next and I'll see you guys tomorrow